Michael Jackson wanted to buy Marvel. Way back in the 1990s, Marvel was having a hard time keeping up financially. And Marvel was in a position of bankruptcy. In fact, the, it was so bad that the stock market took their name off of the ticker. And it was a situation where Michael Jackson thought it was necessary and a good opportunity to try to buy Marvel. In fact, Michael Jackson loved Marvel so much, one of his favorite, if not his absolute favorite character was Spider-Man. So according to a lot of Michael Jackson's fans, Michael Jackson wanted to buy Marvel so that he could be the new Spider-Man. Mind blowing, crazy. What a wild idea, but it's true. Michael Jackson then went about trying to buy the rights to Spider-Man and subsequently the other Marvel properties as time went on, but he wanted to start with Spider-Man first. However, there is a theory that the reason the deal fell apart was because of Sony. So a lot of you may remember that Sony has a licensing deal with Marvel that happened back in 1999 or 1997, around then. Michael Jackson and Sony were having such a hard time because Michael Jackson and Sony have been at each other's necks since day one. Michael Jackson and Sony have been, they were fighting with each other. Uh, Michael Jackson came out publicly and said that he hated the CEO of Sony. Sony and Michael Jackson's first conflict happened in 1997 as the company started to try to control Michael Jackson and his work. Remember, Michael Jackson wanted to buy back his catalog. That was actually a massive thing for him. He wanted to buy back his catalog and he wanted to take control back over his work. But Sony didn't want him to do that. Sony was tired of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson came out publicly telling people that Sony sucks. He came out publicly telling everybody that Sony is garbage. He came out publicly telling everybody that the CEO of Sony was a fraud. Okay? Think about this. So in the process of Michael Jackson trying to buy Marvel, it had just so happened that Sony was also interested in buying a part of Marvel, taking a piece out of the pie, if you will. In this same moment, Michael Jackson began to realize that this was a losing battle. And versus Sony, it was really no contest. Sony was gonna win that deal. Now, with that being said, you have to understand something very crucial. Marvel was in a state of bankruptcy. They were in trouble. They needed the money. Although Michael Jackson being a, su a super huge megastar, it would have been great having him be part of it. But Sony is a multi, was a multi, and is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate corporation that spans across multiple countries. Marvel felt it necessary to stick with Sony. But it goes even deeper than that. Check this out. There is a theory that Sony and Marvel worked together to create allegations <clears throat> against Michael Jackson in order to bleed him dry so that he could not pursue this deal any longer. Now, a lot of people think that sounds crazy. That makes no sense. What, he had allegations against him back in 1993. Yes, but around 1997 to 1999, and remember, 1997 was the start of the issues between Sony and Michael Jackson. 1999 was when the deal happened between Sony and Marvel. Between 1997 and 1999, Sony was on a rampage trying to make sure that they could keep Michael Jackson down. And that, could, that accomplished two things, according to this theory. It accomplished two things. One, Michael Jackson would not be able to pursue buying his catalog from Sony. And number two, he was unable and would have been unable to try to purchase the licensing rights from Marvel because he would be spending too much money on the litigation, on the allegations, on his lawyers and the legal paperwork. Now, look, this theory may not be true. And, and a lot of people 
a lot of people truly believe that these super mega corporations, they could never do that. No, that's that's impossible. He he would that no. Marvel and Sony would never work together to try to destroy the legacy and the trust of Michael Jackson. False. These corporations have been trying to do this for, for decades. Anytime they feel like you are a threat, they're going to try to take you out. And honestly, the theory goes even deeper. It goes even deeper. A lot of people believe that Michael Jackson's death was directly associated with his fight against Sony. Yes. People believe that Michael Jackson was killed by Sony as time went on. Why? Because, again, back in the 1990s, yes, although Michael Jackson was in a lot of litigation and a lot of trouble, he did eventually get out of it, right? He was found innocent and everyone moved on with their life. And since that happened in the early 2000s, he began to rebuild his wealth. And guess what? He wanted his catalog from Sony. So from 1993, when the allegations first happened, all the way to about 2003, when he was going after Sony to get his catalog back, Sony, according to this theory, allegedly was planning to get rid of Michael Jackson. The allegations didn't work. The accusations didn't work. So what can we do to get rid of this Michael Jackson guy? A lot of people believe that Sony hired the man who drugged Michael Jackson and killed him in 2009. Yeah, this, hey, this, this, listen, the CIA tried to kill Bob Marley, okay? Like, this type of stuff is not new. That's the thing I want you guys to understand. The idea that a super conglomerate corporation, billion dollar, like, these people are always trying, they're always looking after the bottom line. Michael Jackson's catalog was the largest that Sony owned at the time. It was the largest catalog. The largest. And for Michael Jackson to try to buy out this catalog would have been frightening. And keep in mind, Michael Jackson has bought the catalog of several artists. So look at this. Did Michael Jackson buy Eminem's catalog? Not entirely, but he did have a vested financial interest in many of his tracks. Think about that. And even right here, it says, Sony reaches a blockbuster deal for Michael Jackson's catalogs. I want you guys to listen to this because this is after he died, okay? This is after Michael Jackson died. The richest music catalog deal to date would give Sony half of Michael Jackson's recorded music and songwriting rights. Valuing, listen to this. Listen to how much Michael Jackson's catalog is worth. Just half, just half of his catalog is worth $1.2 billion or more. That is massive. That is massive. So when you think about why they wanted to get rid of Michael Jackson, when you think about how in the 90s, Michael Jackson wanted to tap into Marvel, Sony wanted Marvel. Michael Jackson wanted his catalog, Sony wanted his catalog. Michael Jackson and Sony have been going at it for so long. After Michael Jackson dies, that was when Sony was able to get half of Michael Jackson's catalog. Hey, newsflash. It is easier to purchase someone's catalog no, no matter the portion. It is easier to get someone's catalog after they die. And what do you know? Sony ends up getting Michael Jackson's, half of Michael Jackson's catalog after he dies. What a surprise. And people really believe that Sony had nothing to do with Michael Jackson's death? Insane. Absolutely insane. Anyway, tell me what you think. Do you think that Michael Jackson was going for Marvel, going for the, the role of Spider-Man and he was knocked off? And then later on down the road, Sony ended up getting rid of him? Do you think that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something new will come out later on down the road. Maybe we'll find out more. But as of right now, this sounds fishy.